Today we're going to be going through how to model this rocket. It's actually an asset I've used in the background of several of my animations recently. If you're curious to see how I designed, modeled, and rigged these characters, you can actually check out my course over on MoGraph Mentor. It's meant for intermediate to advanced Blender users that are curious to learn more about character modeling and rigging. And in this course, you'll follow along with me and get to see some of my kind of tips, techniques, and my workflow of how I go about creating simple characters that I can make quickly and animate on my own for social media and for clients. So let's begin modeling our rocket. So we're actually going to use the default cube. So let's go ahead here, snap into front view. What we're going to do is we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to crank that up to two. And then we're going to switch here into edit mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit control R to add an edge loop right there in the center. We're just going to drag that down there to kind of tighten up the bottom. I'm going to switch over to wireframe. I'm going to grab these here and kind of pull that up there. I'm going to add another edge loop here in the center. Again, that's just control R. And I'm going to grab these vertices at the top here and just scale those in. Then I'm going to grab these vertices here and kind of scale that out. And that'll give me kind of a cartoony rocket look. I'm going to switch back out to object mode. I'm going to do right click shade smooth. I'm going to apply that subdivision. Then I'm going to add another one with a viewport rendering of two. I'm going to go back here into the front view. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some creases here and here. So a quick way to do that is if we come into edit mode, switch over to edge selection mode there, and we alt click and then hold shift to select these two edge loops here. What we can do is we can actually use a bevel by hitting Control B and drag that out just a little bit. Only want to do a small one. And I'm going to roll up once on my mouse and you can see that adds another segment. So that adds a segment there in the center. So I'm going to deselect everything. Then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to Alt select that segment and come down here. And I'm going to Alt select that segment. And then what I'm going to do is hold Alt S and then I can just kind of scale in ever so slightly and that's going to add a crease. Now the further accent that crease, we're actually going to add an edge crease to the edge loops on the outside of it. So what we'll do there is we will shift click this one, shift click this one, this one, and this one. And again, that's holding alt. If you come up here, you see you have edge crease and the shortcut is shift E. So what you can do is just drag to the right and that'll turn purple kind of making that sharp. Now, if I tab back out to object mode, you can kind of see that we've created these creases around the edge pretty quickly there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a window here. So let's switch over to wireframe mode so we can see what we're doing there. And we're going to add a mesh cylinder. And then I'm just going to scale that down to about there, which is about the size of the window I want. I'm going to switch over to the side view. I'm going to hit R90 to rotate that to 90 degrees. Then I'm going to bring that out here. We're going to switch back to the front view. Make sure that's about the size we want. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit view, go to solid. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch to face selection mode. Now we're going to press I with that front face selected. And I only have that face selected. We're going to press I and we're going to kind of bring that in there until we get about the rim size of a window that we want. I'm going to switch over here to the side view just so I can see a bit. I'm going to hit E and I'm just going to extrude inwards. And with that, I kind of have the shape of a window that I want. I'm going to switch over to edge selection mode there. I'm going to select this edge loop, this edge loop. Again, that's holding alt. I'm going to select this edge loop and I'm going to hit control B. That'll allow me just to give a little bit of a bevel there. And I'm actually going to roll up so that I have two increments there. That'll just help make it smoother. Now what I'm going to do is go back out in the object mode, switch into the side view, and I'm just going to bring that back onto the Y. Now if you want, you can kind of rotate that to get that more in line with the edge there. And you just want to make sure that your window there is not going to pop back through your model. And if I do that, I'm pretty happy with the way that window looks. So now let's go ahead, right click that shade smooth. And if you want, you can add a subdivision modifier there to make that a little bit smoother, but that will start to slow down your scene. So with that, we kind of have our window and our rocket made. So you can see here that I'm getting a little bit of lumpiness from that crease I did. So we're just gonna go ahead and correct some of that. So if we come in here to edit mode and we take our edge selection there and we hit SZ zero, that will flatten that out. And again, we'll select this one SZ zero and that'll flatten that out on the Z axis. And you can see in here, 
that this one got a little bit lost. So let's go ahead and click that. Select that edge loop in there. And if you switch over to wireframe view, you can make sure you have it selected. And we're just gonna do SC0. And then let's actually grab that and press Z, move up on the Z axis to kind of center that into that crease. Now, if we switch out the object view, you can see that this crease now is a lot smoother all the way around. So let's go ahead. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some little wing tips. So to add those little wing tips, we're actually just going to draw them with a Bezier curve. And to do that simply, we're going to start with a circle. So first, let's hide these objects here. Now let's go ahead, go to add, and we'll go to curve, and then we'll go to circle up here. And now what that's going to do is if we go to top view, it's going to give us a circle. And you can just kind of make a little wing shape here. So I'm just going to tab into edit view, and I'm going to grab this one. And I'm just going to kind of play with those until I get what I think is a good little wing shape. So I'm going to grab this here and I'm just rotating those Bezier points and you can scale those in and out to make them a little sharper. So I'm going to grab this one up here. I'm going to rotate that one. So it's kind of 90 degree angles there. I'm going to scale that up to make it a little bit bigger. Grab this one down here, grab this one, make our wing a little bit bigger out that direction. With that, I'm pretty happy with our wing shape. So now what I can do is tap back out on the object mode. And with that selected, you can come over here to your object data properties. And over here, we can add some geometry. So let's go ahead, turn on this geometry here. And if we set our extrude, you can set a number small like one, and you'll usually see that it gets very large. And we do not want it to be quite that big. So these numbers are pretty sensitive because these are measuring by meters. So what we're gonna do, so let's start with 0.1. 0.1 looks good to me. So now we just wanna make sure that we have this up here filled. So actually, if we come up here to the top, you see that by default, it's the 3D. If we change this to 2D and we set our fill mode to both here, which it should be on by default, you'll see that it'll kind of fill out the front and back there, which is exactly what we want. So now we wanna add a tiny bit of a bevel. So what we'll do is we'll come down here to the depth and we'll just do something really small. Like let's try 0.1 to start. And you can see that even that's kind of large. So what we'll do is we'll do point 025 and I'm pretty happy with that and you can turn the resolution up if you want to create a smoother bevel mine by default is set to four and then you can play with the resolution up here and I'm going to set mine to about 32 and what that's going to do is just smooth out the resolution here so now if we come up to the top view we can see that once it's actually kind of filled out it looks a little warped so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in edit mode I'm going to rotate by negative 90 degrees to kind of get it right side up. And I want to drag this down on the Y axis so that my origin points kind of there towards the top of the wing. And I'm just going to refine this wing shape just a little bit until I get something a little more natural looking. And with that, I'm pretty happy with the wing tip. Now what you can do is you can decide where you want your origin point to be. I want mine to kind of be right up here in the corner so i'm going to top back out to object mode and then what i'm going to do is switch to side view i'm going to rotate this on the side view negative 90 degrees and the way you can do that is just putting r and then the minus sign and then 90. what we can do here is we can just switch over here to the front view and we can grab our little fin here and we can just go ahead and try and just place that where we think it might look best i think around there is going to look good so let's just switch back here to the side view Let's go ahead, dry this back here to kind of the center there. And we can kind of see what that looks like. And I'm pretty happy with what that looks like. So now is a good chance to go ahead and adjust this if you're not happy with it. And I just want that to be a little bit straighter. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks kind of jutting inside there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cursor and I want to rotate this around and I'm gonna do three fins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide 360 by three, and then I can go ahead and rotate this around by that many times. So what I can do is I can come up here, grab this here, we're gonna switch this to 3D cursor, go ahead and we can grab this fin here, we can hit Shift D to duplicate it, click to set it there, and then I'm gonna hit R120, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, Shift D, and I can just hit Enter, R120, and you can see here, now that we kind of have fins going all around the rocket. Now I kind of want these fins to kind of be in the front view so that they're on each side. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna grab all three of these fins, go into the top view, then I'm just gonna kind of rotate those until that back fin's kind of in line 
with the Y axis there. Now we can just go ahead and create an exhaust pipe here. So we can actually tap here into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to switch into face selection mode. I'm gonna hit C to kind of bring up the circle select. And I'm just gonna paint along here to select all of these. Now in your add-ons, you can turn on a tool called Loop Tools. And when you turn that on, it's a free add-on. Loop Tools will appear over here in your edit panel. So I'm just gonna pull that down there. I'm gonna drag this in, I don't need that to be so big. And then I'm gonna hit Circle. And what that's gonna do is help turn that into a circle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into front view with that selected. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna change this back to medium point. I'm going to hit extrude and come down on the Z axis just a little bit. Then I'm gonna hit extrude again, scale out there just a little bit and extrude downwards. And then I'm just gonna kind of repeat that a couple times until I get an exhaust size that I'm happy with. And I'm gonna do that one more time. And then now what I can do is I can switch back over to add selection mode and we're gonna use that crease again to kind of add some form back into this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab these two on this lip. I'm gonna grab this one and this one in here. And you can always just double check in wireframe that you have that one selected because it can be kind of hard with the subsurface on. You can also turn that off in edit mode over there so that you can see what you're doing a bit easier. So let's select this one and this one and this one. And then you can see down here that because this up here is not really a true edge loop when I extruded it, it kind of didn't select down here. So what we can do is just go ahead, select that edge, select that edge, select that edge. And then I'm actually going to turn that subdivision back on. And what I'm going to do then is hit Shift E, slide to the right there, so we can kind of add some form. And now if I deselect everything, switch back out to object mode, I can see that I have a pretty decent looking rocket exhaust. And I think I actually want that the exhaust to be a tiny bit tighter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here into edit mode. I'm going to come back down here to the bottom. I'm going to use that circle select again. I'm going to select everything here. Then what I'm going to do is come back out into front. And then I'm going to hold control plus. And what that's going to do is just kind of grab everything there until I get the whole exhaust. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to scale that in. And if you want, you can actually leave a pinch there. I kind of want mine to be more flat. So then I can just move that up on the Z axis. And now we kind of have an exhaust for our rocket ship. So that concludes the modeling portion of our rocket ship. Now the texturing and the lighting and stuff are things that I've covered in other tutorials, but let me hop over and show you how I lit it and what I did for the textures. And then I'll also link you to those tutorials in the description below. So let's walk through how I kind of lit and textured this scene. It's a very simple setup. So the texture here that I used across the entire thing is actually the same thing as my clay shader tutorial. But down here, I took the fingerprints out of the normals and instead replaced it with just a little bit of noise. And then I just turned that noise down to 0.1. What this does is instead of giving it that kind of fingerprint clay look, it's like the fingerprints just appear in the roughness and there's a tiny bit of noise in there. And that noise and those fingerprints on the roughness contribute to kind of giving it a plasticky feel. And then if you play this color ramp here, you can actually just take this value over here and adjust it to make it a shinier or more of a matte plastic like you think. In terms of texture painting, there is nothing complicated. I actually just came in here with different materials and I just selected the different faces that I wanted to apply it to and made my color over here in the material panel and hit assign. So that's how I textured most of it. The only thing that had any texture painting whatsoever was this logo that I created, which I have a texture painting tutorial that I can link to in the description below. But to give you an idea of how they did that, I went into the texture paint and I went over to my tools over here and down here, I took a texture and then I just used a projection map here and you can see that and then i just kind of got it shaped where i wanted and kind of sized it how i had rotated how i wanted and then just went ahead and painted it on there so i just made that logo and just painted that on there now let's take a look at the lighting setup now the lighting setup's incredibly simple so what you can do is you can see that i have several area lights here so i made three giant area lights here and in here i gave them just a very bright light, but then I made them very big so that it'd be kind of like a big soft light, but still provide a lot of brightness. So I set these to 500 and you can see they're quite a bit bigger than the rocket. And if you come here in the top view, you can kind of see I surrounded them with it like a three sided box. And then I created another area light up here and that one's not as bright, but what that does is when you zoom in on here, let me turn that back to render view so you can see the lighting. 
you'll see that it kind of helps give it this highlighted edge up there. And with that, that was really all I did for the lighting. The only other thing I did is that if you come over here to the world view, and the background color, I just put a tiny bit of purple in the emission. And you can see that if I turn that up just a little bit, you can see how it kind of just brightens that whole scene and adds a little bit of color pop to it. Thank you again for watching. As usual, I love seeing what you make from these tutorials, so please tag me on Instagram and I'll make sure to share it. Thanks again for watching.